Okay, so the sine of angle A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So when we solve that for H, we multiply both sides by the little b. So we get b sine of A is equal to H. For the other one, the sine of B is equal to the opposite, in this case is H, and the hypotenuse is A. So when we solve that for H, we get little a sine of big B is equal to H. Now let's talk about some conventions right here. I don't know how much you have had experience with this in the past, but when we're talking about angles and sides of triangles, angles are labeled with capital letters, sides are labeled with lowercase letters. You have to do that, okay? Angles are uppercase, sides are lowercase, because they're supposed to correspond to each other. So the reason for doing this is because we're shifting from right triangles to what we call scaling triangles. So in this uh, diagram right here, what I've done is I've stuck these two triangles together, okay? I've um, uh, put the two sides that, that uh, have the right angle, I put those back to back, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at solving this entire triangle. We're going to take this part of the picture, the right angle, that middle part out, and we're going to focus on this big um, triangle that doesn't have a right angle in it. Um, and notice how I have it labeled. Okay, little a, side a, is the side that is directly opposite of angle a. Side b is directly opposite of angle b, and side c is directly across from angle c. Okay, that's going to be our convention with these triangles. The angles and the sides, their letters match up. Angles are uppercase, sides are lowercase. Okay, that's the convention that we're going to use. Okay, so as I mentioned, the purpose of today is to be able to solve scaling triangles. The definition of scaling is that uh, no sides are the same and you have no right angles, and you can't actually read my notes because it doesn't show up. Let me pick a color that does show up. No sides. Let me see that. Yep. No sides the same. No right angles. Okay, isosceles, you know, have two congruent sides, two congruent base angles, uh, equilateral, all sides and all angles are con uh, congruent, but scaling triangles have no sides the same and no angles are congruent, or excuse me, no angles are right angles. Um, and we're going to solve them, meaning we're going to find all the angles and all the sides, but we can't use right triangle trait because that only applies when there's a right triangle. Well, because of this relationship that we had here, um, in this triangle that we found, if we put that H in there, <clears throat> we found that H was equal to A sine of B, and H was equal to B sine of A. Well, if both of those equations are equal to H, what does that mean we can do with the two equations? What do you mean by plug them in? So they're equal to each other. If they're equal to the same thing, then that means they're equal to each other. So that means A sine of B is equal to B sine of A. And if we kind of rearrange this equation um, so that our letters are on the same sides, okay, we divide both sides by A, we get the sine of B is equal to B over the sine of A over A, B sine of A over A. And then if we multiply or divide by B, we get the sine of b over little b is equal to the sine of a over little a. This is something that we call the law of sines. Now, you may have seen this previously in math 3, um, but I'm just going to teach it from scratch. Okay, this is what we call the law of sines. And we can relate any of the three sides and angles to each other. So this is not a true equation right here. You never have an equation with multiple equal signs in it like this. But what it's saying is you can pick any two out of the three to use. Okay, it just depends on what information you're given. If you're given information about A and B, then you use the first two in a ratio of each other. If you're given information about A and C, then you use sine of A over A, 
A's equal to the sine of C over C. Or if you're given information about B and C, then the sine of B over B is equal to sine of C over C. Okay, you can use those in any combination uh, with each other. It's what we call the law of sines. We're also going to look at something called the law of cosines. We won't get to that today. Um, but law of sines is our focus today. All right, so um, first scenario, if we are given two angles and one side, we are going to solve this triangle, triangle ABC. If we are told that angle C is 102 degrees, angle B is 29 degrees, and side B is 28 feet. Okay, side C, or excuse me, angle C is 102 degrees. Angle B is 29 degrees and side B is 28 degrees. Now, you don't always have to draw a picture. It's just for these first few examples I'm going to so that you can get a visual of what we're looking at. So I'm going to label uh, what I know. Angle C is 102, angle B is 29, and side B is 28 feet. So... That means I'm going to use, I have information about B and C, so I'm going to use the sine of angle B over side B is equal to the sine of angle C over side C. So I'm going to plug in what I know. I know angle B is 29 degrees. I know side B is 28 degrees. I know angle C is 102 degrees. I'm looking for side C. Now, how do we solve equations when we have two fractions equal to each other? Cross multiply. Okay, we are going to cross multiply. So we get C times the sine of 29 degrees is equal to 28 times the sine of 102 degrees. Before I type in anything into my calculator, I'm going to completely isolate my C so I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 29 degrees. So my exact expression is C is equal to 28 sine of 102 degrees over the sine of 29 degrees. And we are going to find an approximation for that. Now before you type anything into your calculator, these angles are in degrees. We have been working primarily in radians. So that means you first of all need to change your mode to degree mode. Okay, mode is beside your second button. Radians and degrees is the third line. Make sure that degree is highlighted. Press enter and then you can start typing. So we have multiple things in the numerator so we need to put it in parentheses. 28 sine of 102. Close the parentheses over the sine of 29 gives us that side C is approximately 56.493. So they gave us units on this one. They said feet. So we'll label that with feet. Okay, we're not finished. Okay, we're still missing an angle and we're missing a side. Now, we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. Why not? Because it's not a right triangle. You can only use the Pythagorean theorem on right triangles. This is not a right triangle, so we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. So to find that third side, we're going to have to use the law of sines again. Well, I kind of brushed over what the easiest part of solving this triangle is. If I've got to find all the angles and all the sides, what's actually the easiest thing for me to find? The third angle. Right? I have two out of the three angles. The easiest thing to find is the third angle. How do I do that? Subtract those two angles from 180. Okay? I have a 102 degree angle and I have a 29 degree angle. So that means my third angle is 49 degrees. So I'm going to set up the law of sines again. <clears throat> This time with 49 degrees and side A. Now, in my personal opinion, I would always use given information 
for my ratio. So what I mean by that is I'm not going to set it up with A and C because I had to find something about C. I had to find side C. So if I made a mistake in finding side C, I don't want to use that mistake if at all avoidable, and it is because I have all the information about B was given to me, okay? So um, I'm just going to jump straight to, to uh, crunching these numbers. Cross multiply and divide, so this is 28 sine of 49 divided by the sine of 29. That tells us that side A is approximately 43.588 feet. Now, I would always, always do the check. Um, do y'all remember the property about triangles and their sides and their angles? Well, they all, all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, but their sides can be ordered, okay? Um, the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. So our smallest angle is angle B, 29 degrees. Our smallest side is 28. Okay? The biggest side is across from the biggest angle, 102 degrees. The biggest side was 56.493. So the middle angle and the middle side should be between those. So I would always do a check and make sure that those numbers do agree. Okay? And they do. And that's one way to check uh, catch some mistakes. Okay? So.